Good day to you all. Good day to you all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. No, that's actually not who it is. Uh, I'm Elliot, and I run... Uh, yeah. So, I was asked by... That's actually not who I am. I am not Justin Hawkins, and this is not Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Uh, I was asked by Comedy Treehouse to tell my Sam Hyde story, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to uh, tell a little bit uh, of a story about how I met Sam and um, my understanding of his work. All of this is from memory. Uh, I did not write anything down. The times and dates may be wrong, and some of the details may be a bit foggy because... Um, uh, I met Sam in what I believe is 2009. It could be 10 or 11 as well. The important and salient point there is that it was at the beginning, at the absolute beginning, right after YouTube had launched. So for the past 22 years, I've run a graduate program in experimental graphic design. Now, when you think of graphic design, the thing that comes to mind, boop, uh, is not exactly what this department is about. If we look in the background or if you've seen my studio at all, all of these flat files, both here and then back there, are filled with, uh, with examples of experimental typography, uh, print work, posters. And so there are hundreds, hundreds of pieces that would conform in some ways to what you think of as graphic design. But the, the, the focus of the department also is on materiality, performance, and the way that it overlaps with contemporary art. What has that got to do with Sam? Well, Again, in 2009, 10, 11, somewhere in that time frame, right after YouTube uh, had, uh, had launched, but before it had really popped, before it had blown up, uh, every year in February, I receive uh, a large amount of applications for people that want to, get, uh, that want to study in, in, the, in the 2D department. Um, I go over those applications and I, I, I narrow that down, those applications down to a, a group of shortlisted candidates for possible inclusion in the department for the following year. At that point, back in uh, the mid aughts, I would also share those applications with my uh, graduate students. By federal law, I am barred from doing that currently. I don't know whether I was barred from doing it then, but I did not know I did not know about the federal law, so I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and shared them with, uh, or I don't think there was one at that point. I went ahead and shared them with uh, with my graduate students, at least their portfolio. The point is, is that I received an application uh, from Sam. His portfolio at that point, if memory serves correct, had maybe one or two pieces of print material in it, but it was almost exclusively uh, these kind of very aggressive uh, YouTube videos that were, I thought, very, very, very they were super interesting. They were um, very vernacular. They were hard to understand in a way, like what the cultural location that these things were coming from were. were. I, if you had seen them, they didn't conform to any ideas of, of high design, any ideas of really at that point, what you would find at that point, what you would find in a uh, in the things that I had seen in a, in, a, in, a, in a graduate program. They were very non-academic. Now, why do I bring this up? I bring this up because if memory serves correct, um, one of the reasons why he was shortlisted was because that work that work was super interesting when I took into account the fact that I believe that he had graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design. Now, the Rhode Island School of Design is is a world-renowned art and design school that is among a handful of, of schools at that level that really um, that really are quite excellent at, at, at what they do. And they're hard to get into on an undergraduate, well, they're not even just undergraduate, they're hard to get into. The point being that you have to have high SATs, you have to have a good portfolio. Uh, we receive, routinely we receive uh, uh, applications from a small collection of schools that Rhode Island School of Design is part of. So when seeing these very aggressive um, and very lowbrow uh, comedic style um, videos at that time frame. I had seen something like that because I was on I was uh, uh, um, watching YouTube at that point. But but it, again, it had that kind of thing had not exploded in mass across our culture, if I remember correctly, and it hadn't exploded in academic circles. So to make a long story short, Sam was invited at that point. Um, we used to invite about 20 people a year to the shortlisted candidates to interview right here in my studio where they would sit down with me and they would also over the course of the day they would get an opportunity to meet with uh with a number of small groups of my current graduate students at the end of that at the end of that interview process my graduate students and i would get together to discuss the candidates and to figure out who we were going to extend invitations to sam was part of that that process now again 
I believe that we met in the late morning uh, here in my studio. Uh, and we had an interview. Uh, now, during that interview, the interview remains very vibrant in my mind because it was one of the strangest interviews <laughs> I've, I've, I've had in my, in my 22 years running a graduate program. Now, I could not get a grip. I could not get a handle on the person that was sitting across from me. We had a far-ranging conversation, but uh, as an example, um, uh, at that point, I could not tell particularly given the work, the, the work was, uh, was very sardonic and uh, very guerrilla-based comedy pieces. But it appeared as if the person sitting across from me, Sam, was adopting this, this persona, right? So in other words, I couldn't get a straight answer out of him. He was, he was shifty. I, he, uh, he, he had a hard time making eye contact. I, I wondered, and I'm not, he might be straight edge. I, I primarily wondered whether this was a performance of some kind or if this was a persona that he was adopting. Then I also thought, well, maybe maybe he was extremely nervous, which I don't think that that's what was going on, or that he was on LSD or whatever. Anyway, at the end of the, towards the end of the interview, which lasted about 40, 40 minutes, I, I, I tried to reach him. I, 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 you know, I said, listen, I said, you know, the work that you're, that you're making is, is really difficult to understand. Um, and it is very compelling. And therefore, you, you, I think that you could be a, a really inter interesting graduate student, but this interview, I mean, I, I said this, this interview is so strange that I can't get a grasp on whether or not you're taking this serious, whether or not you're nervous. It, I said, listen, if you're nervous, if this is just about you being nervous, it's fine. Just put the pretense down. Or, or is this some kind of prank that you're, you know, like, and I, I think at that point he was here with his girlfriend. Um, but I couldn't get a straight answer out of him. Anyway, at the same time, some of the graduates, a few of the kids in my department, by kids, I mean people in their mid-20s, there were a couple people that were making similar style work. I mean, similar is not the correct word, but they were familiar with this emerging genre that Sam was participating in on YouTube. And to be frank about things, uh, even though I really love these couple, this handful, these three graduate students, and I think that they made amazing work. I, frankly, I think that they were player hating his work. Now, I don't think that they did that to him, but to me, they were, they were really negative on the work itself, not based upon political ideology or any of the, th but based upon uh, other factors like how, how I, the one comment that I remember hearing was something about how like there's this emerging group of kids and out of Providence, Rhode Island, the kids, they're in their 20s or whatever that, that are making work like this. And this isn't very original. I, I thought quite the opposite. I thought that, you know, that the work was, was really, really difficult to understand. It was very funny. And it was really difficult to understand what the cultural location that this work was coming from. And therefore, I found it really interesting. But anyway, to make a long story short, I did not extend an invitation to Sam to join our studio. And again, not because of the work, the quality of the work, and not because of uh, his, his, uh, his IQ. I couldn't get a grasp on that. It was because of, the, because of the nature of the interview, and I couldn't tell whether the interview was a put on. So if we flash forward six to eight months or a year, somewhere in that time frame, I get a telephone call from Sam. Now, I could be wrong. I mean, in my mind, it's become a collect call. I don't know whether or not pay phones were still in existence then. I don't think so. We had cell phones. But so again, my memory is a little bit foggy about this. But I distinctly remember him, him calling me and, uh, and, and, you know, being kind of salty, frankly, but, but talking, telling me that, you know, um, that he had a, he had a meeting with Tim Heidecker uh, about uh, that he's in L Los Angeles. He moved there with his friend. I think he said he was living in his car, but that he was trying to crowdsource. He did not use that ex exact expression, but he was trying to crowdsource uh, money uh, to put together uh, stuff that he needed to put together in a 30-day period because he, he had this meeting with, with Tim. And again, I couldn't tell whether or not this, I was like, is this for real? I had no idea whether this shit was for real or not. I declined to... Um, to uh, help fund the project uh, and didn't hear from him for a while. And then, you know, so again, I've known him since somewhere around 2009, 10 or 11. Somewhere around 2015, uh, I get a direct message from him and engage him in a, con in, in, in a couple of, if memory serves, a couple of distinctly different uh, text message conversations that I found, I found where I, you know, I attempted to kind of 
get behind the the like he he tends to play in one of one of his many personas online is to play the fool and you know i he struck me as being exponentially strikes me as being exponentially more intelligent than that so anyway in these conversations i was left with the in these text threads i was left with the distinct impression the concrete impression that he he understand he completely understands what he's doing you know and that might maybe obvious maybe obvious to his fans but but so you know i i couldn't figure out initially whether or not he was a latter day um uh, Andy Kaufman or Hugo Ball or Madonna or, but it seems clear to me that that what he what he does is he understands what the Overton window of acceptable ideal ideology within our culture is, and then he's constantly attempting to step over that line in order to get heat, in order to in order to tweak and to get um, uh, attention, and I think that he does he does that he does that uh, very effectively. Now, having said that. You know, in in these academic environments, you often have artists who claim that you know they're making their work for themselves. They don't give a shit whether anyone else sees it. And I, I find that to be a ruse. I find that to be a canard. I find it to be disingenuous. Uh, the vast majority of artists and designers that I know, what they want to do is they want to be able to uh, they want to be able to sustain themselves off of their work. That kind of heat that Sam generates almost instantly without seemingly without effort is something that that in academic environments is a rare commodity it's a rare commodity uh as an example um at some point sam sent me a book uh, a, you know really beautiful book that that he that he released through mde through uh, million dollar extreme uh, the thing must have been 600 pages uh 700 pages i have no idea it was large and obviously an expensive production and i think the thing sold out instantly that doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay obviously there's a lot of controversy around sam and uh, um, with accusations of misogyny racism uh, any anything that falls outside of the overton window he has been he has been accused of i am not justifying any of this i don't follow him that that closely I, 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 my, my emerging opinion is, is, is confused about whether or not he is ideo ideological or whether this is simply that he's a kind of symptom of a kind of nihilist, <clears throat> nihilist universe where, where, you know, in the attention economy, where attention is the most single most important thing and that he's finely tuned to find, to find exactly where the, uh, where the social mores unravel and that to repeatedly and routinely step over that. The last, the last uh, anecdote that I will give is that Henry and I were in Manhattan in 2016, 2015, 20, somewhere in there, and uh, there was a terrorist bombing. So we're in our uh, hotel on like the 17th floor at like 5 p.m. or no, 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 7 p.m. And, uh, you know, my, my iPad started lighting up. The, the uh, Twitter mentioned that there was a bombing, and I think it was in Chelsea. I opened my window, and literally out the window, about 500 yards away, there's a helicopter that is like hovering above the neighborhood that we were in. And I'm sure the people that follow Sam know this. Well, anyway, at the same time on Twitter, uh, the, 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 there are all of these Twitter threads that identify Sam Hyde as, as the bomber. And with, with school shootings, this happens routinely. Now, I have no idea whether or not Sam is behind that, whether or not he's doing that, whether his people are doing that whether his haters and detractors are doing that, whether his fan base is doing that. Um, and obviously there are a lot of problems with that, but it seems as if it is one of the most aggressive media strategies, for lack of a better word, or artistic in, uh, interventions in the media sphere that I've ever seen. So again, I, I, um, I think that the, the, the recurrent theme that I would give is one of confusion with regard to what the position of Sam is and whether or not it whether or not ultimately Sam's comedy is a representation is a representation of postmodern nihilism is like the 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 uh, apotheosis of postmodern nihilist uh, comedy or whether or not it is ideological in, and political in nature and or you know my I think my my opinion at this point after you know him hitting me up via DM and me me kind of being very interested in in whether or not this is a persona or not. I'm coming down on the on on the idea that he knows exactly what he's doing, even though he he routinely plays the fool. Or some of his some of his personas are very lowbrow, very vernacular, and are an attempt to position himself as uh, as exponentially less intelligent. So that's my Sam story.